Good morning, dear hearts. We are on lesson 99, and please subscribe if somehow you have yet to do so. Um, a great lesson, and uh, it, it is a monumental lesson, I guess we could say, because we are this close to lesson 100, and pat yourself on the back if, if that's possible, and tell yourself what a good job you're doing, that here you are with me, lesson 99. And tomorrow we'll have fireworks. No, <laughs> not really. Um, but yes, we will definitely celebrate how far we have come. Now, salvation is my only function here. And now you say, wait a minute. Didn't we have a lesson that forgiveness is my function as the light of the world? And yes, we did. And good remembering, that was lesson 62. And then just a few days after that, we had a lesson that told us my happiness and my function are one. So my function now is being all tied up with salvation and forgiveness and happiness. And that is why I am here. And it's easily explained with the first line of today's lesson, which tells us salvation and forgiveness are the same. And yeah, I've been saying that too, but now we've got it in writing. So salvation and forgiveness are indeed the same. Now salvation, and I've used this many times before, salvation, the word salvation, which I know some people have an issue with, but for me, I liken it to when I was a little girl and I would get a boo-boo and my mom would put an ointment, a salve upon the boo-boo for it to heal better. And salvation is a salve for this world that has so many wounds. We are healing this wounded world with salvation and the forgiveness that it entails. So forgiveness and salvation are the same. They both imply that something has gone wrong, something to be saved from, forgiven for, something amiss that needs corrective change, something apart or different from the will of God. They thus do both terms imply a thing impossible, but yet which has occurred resulting in a state of conflict seen between what is and what could never be. So we have a, a conflict, a, a problem here. There's a problem here between what is real and what is not real and never will be real. Truth and illusions both are equal now for both have happened as far as my thought system goes. The impossible becomes the thing you need forgiveness for, salvation from. Salvation now becomes the borderland between the truth and the illusion. It reflects the truth because it is the means by which you can escape illusions. Yet it is not yet the truth because it undoes what was never done. Salvation is that line of demarcation between truth and illusions. This is how we are able to heal what never was to come into the realization of what is indeed true and always has been. Um, I'm going to read quite a bit of today's lesson and then interject along the way as you know I do. How could there be a meeting place at all where earth and heaven can be reconciled within a mind where both of them exist? And in truth, it can't. This is why, again, this is a course in making decisions and choosing. We will need to change, uh, uh, choose at some point and change our thoughts between what is real and what is not real. We'll need to choose between earth and heaven because right now, in my mind, they cannot be reconciled. Heaven is where all truth and uh, abides and where God is. And the earth, as I see it now, is that wounded world. The mind that sees illusions thinks them real. They have existence and that they are thoughts. And remember, everything starts with a thought. And yet they are not real because the mind that thinks these thoughts is separate from God. And only if I'm thinking with God Am I really thinking at all? So God is the mind with which I think. Um, and then just for the moment, I want to go back to lesson because we're in the God is, that's from the God is section of lessons. 
back in the first 50, that God is the love in which I forgive, which was lesson 46, but in lesson 46, and it told us, as we condemn only ourselves, so do we forgive only ourselves. So this forgiveness, this salvation, it is the gift I give to me. Forgiveness is the gift I give to me. Again, it is that inside job. What joins the separated mind and thoughts with mind, capital mind and thought? So it's lowercase mind and lowercase thought and capital mind and capital thought, which are forever one. What can join those two uh, different things, that dichotomy? What could hold the truth inviolate yet recognize the need illusions bring and offer means by which they are undone without attack and with no touch of pain? So what could do that? What could do that? Ah, what but a thought, capital thought of God, could be this plan by which the never done is overlooked and sins forgotten which were never real? So what could that be? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit holds the plan of God exactly as it was received of him within the capital mind of God. And in our own, it is apart from time. The Holy Spirit is apart from time in that its source is timeless, which in truth ours is as well. Yet it operates, the Holy Spirit operates in time because of our belief that time is real. It is not but we have a deep-seated belief that time is a real thing. Unshaken does the Holy Spirit look on what you see, on sin and pain and death, on grief and separation, and on loss. Yet, he, yet does he know one thing must still be true. God is still love, and this is not his will. That is one of our lines that we will use in our practicing today. But just to go into that for a moment, because I love that word still. God is still love. God is quiet love. God is love without uh, opposite. God is love without turmoil, without chaos. God's love is still and quiet and forever. God's love is still and what I am experiencing here that is harming and bothering his beautiful child of God that you all are, we all are, is not his will. This is the thought that brings allusions to the truth and sees them as appearances behind which the changeless and the sure. So what is behind all of those veils, all of those curtains? What is real behind that, that light and that truth? that God is still love. And this, that's not his will. So this is the thought that saves and that forgives because it lays no faith in what is not created by the only source that the Holy Spirit knows. If it wasn't created by our Father, by our source, by our creator, by the creator of the Holy Spirit, then it is not real. Um, so, as this goes along, and we says that, you know, salvation is our function with the one to whom the plan was given, Holy Spirit. Now are you entrusted with this plan along with him? The Holy Spirit has one answer to appearances regardless of their form, their size, their depth, or any attribute they seem to have. Salvation is my only function here. God is still love, and this is not his will. Um, you who will yet work miracles, be sure you practice well the idea for today. And it is still, again, the first five minutes of every hour, which we try. It says, try to perceive the strength in which you say these words, in which your freedom lies. Freedom and salvation also. Synonymous. Forgiveness leads us to freedom as well. Your Father loves you, okay? That's what we need to know. Our Father loves us. And all the world of pain is not his will. Forgive yourself the thought he wanted this for you. Then let the thought with which he has replaced all your mistakes, that thought, allow the Holy Spirit, which God has given to replace all of our little thoughts and all of our mistakes and all of our errors uh, that have entered the darkened places of our mind, 
that thought those thoughts were real and let them go. We are with that, we are giving forgiveness to ourself, which is who we always forgive. We are extending lilies of forgiveness to ourself. Um, this part belongs to God as does the rest. It is God's will that your mind be one with his. It is God's will that he has but one child. It is God's will that his one child is you. And think of these things in practicing today and start the lessons that we start, that we learn today with this instruction in the way of truth. Salvation is my only function here. Salvation and forgiveness are the same. Learning that. Then turn to the Holy Spirit who shares your function here <clears throat> and let him teach you what you need to learn to lay all fear aside and know yourself, your true self, as love which has no opposite in you. Forgive all thoughts which would oppose the truth of your completion, your unity, and your peace. And of course, if there is anything that is tempting to us to go back into an illusion and to believe the illusion might be real, remind ourselves and to say that salvation is my only function here. God is still love and this is not his will. Salvation is my only function here. And thus do you lay forgiveness on your mind and let all fear be gently laid aside that love may find its rightful place in you and show you that you are a child of God. That's it for today. Um, this is lovely. This is a lovely lesson. This is a lesson that really is bringing together the idea that about God's plan for salvation and that we are an integral part and we will accept it. And this tells us indeed why. This brings together the truth that we are spirit. We are that thought as the Holy Spirit is that thought from the mind of God. This is a a lesson in unity and clarification of who and what we really are and why indeed we are here. We are here to understand and know how much we are loved and God is still love. And if I'm experiencing anything that is not of love, is not of joy and peace and happiness, well, that's not his will. So uh, please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment. Uh, please take in a deep breath, smile and release, and um, just pray to understand this more and more and bring it into your true self with that big S. Namaste.